Widely considered to be one of the most exciting and influential designers working today, Martin Boss embraces a practice that is unconventional, rebellious, and playful. In this episode, Martin talks about his ambitious exhibition during Milan Design Week and how the industry is transforming. It's time to dive in. Martin, how are you? Hi, I'm good. And you? I'm doing well. I was just browsing a little bit on Instagram earlier, and I saw you made a you put a post, and that post was very interesting. It says that uh, you are one of the most. Oh no, it says artists with the most demand in 2023 so far, and you made that list. Yeah, yeah, that was was nice. Like it's not very cool to post it, maybe, but uh, <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, I thought it's so funny. Like uh, it's. Um, uh, it, it was such a list that, and, and so many people were sending it to me, like, "Hey, Martin, you're in this list." So, um, so um, our PR said, "Like, uh, well, why don't we just make a funny post out of it?" Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's nice. It's um, great. I mean, there's great names over there, and the fact that I mean, we are just starting, and you're already starting that way. This must be exciting. Did you did you know ahead of time? Did they reach out to you and say, "Hey, by the way, this is coming out," or was it more like a surprise? No, it was a surprise. And actually, it's not the first time that I saw myself in that list. Um, um, but I, I don't follow the art world that much, to be honest. Um, uh, but uh, but yeah, of course, like I am surrounded by people who are. So so they uh, gave me attention to this uh, to this post. So but uh, for the rest, I didn't know about it. Now it says artist. Do you consider yourself more of an artist or a designer or a combination of both? Yeah, a combination of both. Like the definition is is also a bit outdated, I think. And I understand, like, yeah, there is not really a word for it. I think I found myself in a uh, in a platform where I can kind of use all the elements of all the disciplines of art. You know, like even performance or video, or uh, I, I use everything a bit. Um, and there's always this debate, like, is, is an artist or a designer? But it's kind of a, a meta discussion, I think. Like, in, in the end, like, I just make what I make. And uh, uh, if there are people who are questioning whether or not I'm an artist, now I can say, like, well, I'm not only an artist. I'm in, a, <laughs> in the top ten of uh, most rewarded exactly. artists. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, like, I, I'm, I'm just making my... Um, uh, my things and and it, it lands. I'm every time a little bit. Um, the only thing when it comes, there are two reasons why it's it's relevant. Um, for, so sometimes I need to fill in my profession, and then I really think, yeah, what, what am I like? Then then it's relevant. Well, that's a minor uh, problem, uh, I would say. And and the other thing is like, where do I present my work? Like uh, uh, this week, it will be Milan Design Week. Um, or should it be more at Art Basel, and and I'm a little bit in both worlds. So um, uh, for for Art Basel, maybe it's it's too much on the design side. For Milan, it's maybe a bit too much on the art side. But uh, in the end, like uh, it, it it finds its way, and uh, and I'm happy, so it's okay. So how do you have those conversations? Is that like an internal conversation, or as you develop the the, the design or you know the project, you start figuring it out what where's the best place to showcase it? Yeah, it's it's the uh, actually that like I and I always try to to see what's the context in which I work. Um, also, if you work for a public space or something like that, um, like then of course it's a different era or how do you say like diff different area in which you work than um, than if it's uh, if it's really in uh, a more functional uh, place in a, in a living room of somebody like yeah like I mean. Yeah, it's it, it's. Uh, I I don't try to define it. I just like like I I compare it often like with music. You know, like uh, I like Tom Waits, but I don't know what category he is in. You know, and he he I think he can play blues, but he can play jazz as well. If if you ask him, so yeah, it's it's not a big deal. Is that something important to you to be able to you know use all the toys and plays in all the different you know disciplines? Or yeah, that is that is uh, important, and, and I think I also. Um, uh, I, I think I've built it up in a in a way also by by always trying to do something else than than what I did before. Like the um, I I work in in all the techniques like like either wood or metal or ceramics, um, but also video, uh, sound. Uh, 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 now with light sculptures, I recently did this. Um, 
this big uh, light sculpture for the library here in uh, in the Netherlands in Utrecht. Um, uh, well, that, that's a totally new technique, and then I have to reinvent the wheel again. Um, so I like to always go through the boundaries and not restrict myself too much to either a technique or a category or whatsoever. Like uh, there's this quote, like uh, having a style is like being in jail. I can totally refer to to that uh, to that quote actually. And that has always been the case for you since you started, or as your career progressed, you started finding more interest in different in different disciplines. Yeah, I um, actually from from when I was young, I um, um, uh, I did not not really know where I would categorize uh, myself, where my my interests were. You know, like like uh, I liked playing music, and I liked uh, theater, and, and I liked writing, and all that. And then I thought, like, okay, now I need to find a profession for myself. And I could not really pinpoint where exactly it would uh, fit. Um, well, I ended up doing the design academy. Um, I like that because there are certain restrictions in design. Like these are the rules. And then within those rules, you can, you can bend the rules, you know, or you can, you can twist it a little bit. Or you can, you can uh, come up with unexpected things. I like that idea of it. But nevertheless, I still have also that background and or background or kind of uh, multiple interests, um, and I uh, not not one of them really stood out. You know, like it, it, I was interested equally in theater or music or film or whatsoever. And um, yeah, and I like that I can kind of cherry pick now from from all those disciplines. Like for instance, the the clocks. That's a that's a perfect example. Like in which, yeah, it has a certain functionality. You can watch the time on it, but obviously the function is not the main thing of it like i I, uh, it, uh, I often say like the fact that it's functional is is artistically interesting but functionally it's it doesn't add up that much because of like in the end you, you will watch your time on your phone or your watch or something like that so it's not really like oh i need a clock let's buy a clock by martin Baas. i mean that's that's not what you what you would do so functionality is is part of rather a part of the artistic value rather than the functional value um, but uh, anyway, it's a video. Um, it's also a physical object. Um, uh, so so it, it, it is really this blend between uh, an object, a video, performance. So there, all the elements uh, come together in a nice way, I think. I never stared at a clock as long as I did the first time I saw <laughs> <laughs> the clock. I was like, I'm, it's, it's been five minutes already. I'm just watching. Fascinating. Mm. Tell me about that idea, though. I mean, how did that come about? And 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 the first time you decided not to pitch the idea, but you show someone, you share what you had in mind. What were the reaction? Um, yeah, it was it was good. Like, um, it was mainly my own reaction in which I felt like this is this could work. Um, uh, like, I had this idea, and and I I said. Uh, to my uh, girlfriend at the time, I said like this this would work, right? Like if I do it, like uh, if I film something and and uh, and uh, and, it, and it takes twelve hours, and then I thought, yeah, that, that, that it should work. And then I tried it really simply with a small camera and 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 uh, visualized like, okay, this were two minutes, but if I do that for twelve hours, it work. And um, and, and yeah, I, I it, it fell the right thing for me also because of it it, it 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 suits so much with with the different interests that i have that which i just described and then i moved on and i thought like okay i can also even make a physical object in which it looks as if you're inside and also that was just by trying like like um i still have the film in which i tried it for the very first time in which i'm still figuring out like because of in the end like for instance we ended up with a matte glass you know a milky glass so um um, but of course, it was not my first idea. Uh, first, I did it with normal transparent glass, and then we're recording this, and then you hear me saying like, mm, "I don't know, it, it doesn't really work like this because of your because of the face of of the, the person inside is kind of blending in with the with the hands of the clock. But if you do milky glass, then the hands of the clock are sharp, and the rest is blurry, and then you have better contrast, and then then it, uh, it's also." I like the more mysterious effect of it. So there it developed a little bit. So uh, so watching that the very first film is very nice to see how that uh, seed was planted. 
No, and to hear the story is fascinating, right? There are so many different trials and, and expectations and way to do things. When do you know it's time to stop? When do you know that, like, you know what, we, this, is, this is it. We're not going to change anymore anything else, and this is what's going to go out to the world? Um, that's mostly when the, when the truck arrives that needs to go to Milan. <laughs> I think like, okay, guys, <laughs> we, we have to, we have to go now. Um, yeah, cause in the end, like, uh, I think every artist, uh, will, uh, will agree like that you're always self-critical and you always see something to improve. And, um, so there's always something extra, um, that you could do. And um, so, so indeed, like I give it all, like, like Milan um, uh, ended up to me kind of my podium in which I do my latest trick, so to say. And, um, and yeah, having that as a deadline um, is, is a good thing because of then, then yeah, well, that's, that's then what you present. And then, of course, like after that, you still can develop things because of um, almost all my collections. They started in Milan, but after that, I, I developed them further and, and then um, I got a commission and then I think like, oh, I had this other idea in my head. Like, let's, let's uh, develop the, the concept a little bit more and, and now I'm going to do that idea. So, so the first step is really the deadline of Milan, which I, which I also deliberately put myself, I, I put that pressure on me like, okay, no bullshit. Like, I go to Milan and there something presentable should be presented and uh, and after that um then i still can develop things but but that's my first uh, way to say okay okay this is this is it for now well what's your process of elimination in terms of ideas as you mentioned you already have kind of an idea in mind you know milan is going to be coming up in a few months let's say we're looking to you no know, uh ahead over here and i'm sure like as any creative person you probably have hundreds and not thousands of ideas and things that you want to develop it but what make you start narrowing things down is some is the theme it's something related to what's going on in the world or something that you a technique that you're excited about can you kind of share a little bit more of that process with us yeah it's it's um it's a combination of things sometimes just practically like uh, i know that milan um costs a lot of uh, energy and uh, and and uh, yeah i really like it's it's an exciting moment and it's not every time that i really feel like doing that you know like i i also i i really like just to have a nice and relaxed life and i don't want to be pushed by the agenda so so i want to be in charge i want to decide like okay do i feel like going for it or or do i skip a year so that's a kind of a pragmatic uh, thing. Then indeed, like the pragmatic thing can be overruled by such a great idea that I think like, ah, but I really have to do this in Milan. Um, and sometimes like, for instance, this year in Milan, it went a little bit the other way around. Um, um, it, uh, this year in Milan, um, I uh, uh, present, or I can say I presented because I know this, this will be uh, played later. I presented, um, a private jet made out of uh, waste materials um, by G-Star. This was an idea that I already had once because of as a more as a designer rather than an artist, like you're always asked for like, oh, could you make something out of recycled plastic? Could you make something out of recycled this and that and that? Um, and I feel always a bit double about it. Like uh, I think like, yeah, uh, it... Uh, I think designers feel a bit guilty about going to such a polluting uh, um, consumption machine like Milan. You know, everybody goes there by airplane and then we are going to look at a recycled stool or a recycled lamp or something like that. And I think, oh, really, is that really what's going to what's going to make a change? I mean, like, I'm fine, like, make, uh, like, uh, make the things that you need to make, but but... I have always a bit this greenwashing idea. I don't really like that. So, um, um, so I had an idea like, oh, if uh, if I ever have the opportunity, I'm going to make a private jet out of recycled materials just for the for the for the fun of it. I could, like this this kind of totally paradox of like the most um, uh, decadent uh, object as a private jet to make that into re from recycled uh, materials. 
Um, so then um, G-Star approached me like, oh, could you make something out of recycled jeans? And I said like, yeah, I would like to make a pri <laughs> private jet. <laughs> and um, well, the, well, of course, they were a bit hesitant about that. But, um, but on the other hand, like they turned it into a message like, okay, we as a jeans brand, we're not innocent. Like uh, we are part of the machine in which everybody participates especially everybody who's in Milan at that very moment. Everybody is a bit guilty. Let's not pretend as if we're just saving the world by, by recycling a little bit, but let's, let's act, at least address this dilemma. So I thought, like, okay, well, that's at least a more honest uh, story than, than just act as if you're uh, so good by, by making uh, another chair out of recycled material. So and for me, uh, yeah, I think, I think more in an artistic way. Um, and also there, if I compare it with, Music, like I wouldn't like um, uh, 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 my favorite artists to uh, my favorite singers to sing songs about uh, recycling uh, materials or so. Like you, you should make good music, and an artist should make good uh, art and good work. And I think in this case there's a kind of an overlap because of I, I like to make an artistic statement about this this double morality in the um, in the design world. And I and that's also like what I what I do more often, of course, in, in Milan. I always like to kind of poke a little bit here and there. Well, you have to, right? You have to. Get <laughs> yeah. big fun. And now we had a uh, fate too good at, with us here, and we had a similar conversation. For her, she was very much vocal about that. She needs to make sure that whatever she's creating needs to exist, makes sense. There's there's a purpose. There's a voice. Because she doesn't want to be adding to you know a lot of, as you mentioned a lot of people in our community really struggle with the idea of sustainability and, and and you know try to improve the world on that aspect. But you're also a creative force. You know you have to find your you have to have your tools to to create it. And if you can bring attention to a, an important cause and have that conversation, the dialogue, and have fun at it, why not? Why are we here for? Yeah, it? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, so, yeah. you have been called rebellious, a rebellious designer. Do you, do you agree with that? Would you consider yourself rebellious? Yeah, well, that's, that's already a kind of a label that I got from when I burned pieces, which was my graduation <laughs> uh, work. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Like, like um, I'm fine. I mean, I understand where it comes from. Um, uh in in a way, uh, making an airplane out of uh, out of waste material is also a sort of uh, rebellious in in that sense. But for me, a rebel is really somebody who puts his middle finger everywhere and uh, and uh, and doesn't really participate or so. It's it's quite easy to kind of criticize from the sideline um, uh, uh, and, and or 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 demolish things that are there. Uh, like uh, it, uh, and I. Um, I always start from a, from a, a, a genuine point of view that I'm really curious what will happen or like I'm really, I really want to create this. And um, that, for instance, also the burnt furniture. Um, I really wanted to, uh, it was not like, oh yeah, I burn a Gaudi chair just for the sake of burning Gaudi or so. No, it, was, and it, it looked like that because of that's, that's what you got like in the end. But it started with, uh, with the act of, like really being interested in um, uh, like, okay, the, uh, all those uh, uh, designers who were there before me, they are uh, kind of a fuel uh, which I use to, to move forward. Um, but I also should dare to literally burn that, that fuel, you know, like to, to literally not put it uh, on, a, on a high pedestal, but really grab it and, and own it and, and burn it and move forward. And um, so that was the, the motivation from where it came. The end result looks a little bit, you could uh, confuse that with being rebellious, but that was not the starting point. It was not like, oh yeah, I hate Gaudi and that's why I burn it. That, so, and that's a subtle difference in which the outcome is similar, but, um, but, uh, but I think... So that's why that's why I understand why people call me rebellious and I'm fine with it. But uh, but yeah, the starting point is mostly not like that. Also, um, it was also now referred to with with this recent work that I did for the library. Um, 
like that's that's a monumental building in the center of Utrecht. Utrecht is is uh, half an hour from Amsterdam and in style comparable to Amsterdam. There's old beautiful buildings, there's canals, romantic city, small city, um, and there's this square with this monumental building, which is the the new library. Uh, it used to be a post office, and um, and it's it's. Uh, and what I did was to to put a kind of a Las Vegas kind of explosion, uh, like like all kinds of neon lights and, and and flickering lights and things like that was what's on top of it. A very straight building, the, the rhythm was very strict, and then this was really it went in all directions, and it and it's colorful uh, opposed to the to the brown and and a serene brick building. Um, the it it was like like also there I got this question like ooh did you do this to provoke or whatever and that was also not the starting point it does provoke apparently because of the newspapers were full of people who had an opinion about it but um, but my starting point was like okay there is this library it's in the center of the city that's uh, it's a monumental city it's a quiet city it's centuries old and and a library has this intellectual um uh, intellectual intellectual heritage that's all the, also the title of the of the work intellectual heritage um with centuries of know-how wisdom philosophers and all that and it's in the city center which is still monumental but the the city center also developed to the modern times like um that square where it's positioned it's a, a party square you know we, uh, it's a student city so so young people are are partying there and drinking beer and there's a festival and 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 all kinds of things so that's very much today you know like flashy and 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 you're being your attention is being caught all the time like there's no time for contemplation or everything that that's uh, uh, that's in the library so i thought there's a huge contrast between the 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 front of the library this busy square and the actual library where uh, where you're to learn and to study and to concentrate so I thought like, well, it's it's actually exactly that contrast, which I see, which I reflect by making that kind of Las Vegas thing. And, and the words that I was making were all related to this intellectual world. So there were Latin terms in, 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 in flickering light and uh, Shakespeare and, and Chekhov and uh, Virginia Woolf, like, like um, so things which don't relate to, to Las Vegas or to that kind of uh, language. Um, where they're um, uh, yeah in, in in neon light, so that's that's the starting point. Like to to play with that contrast, and yeah, it ends up in in something that people sometimes see as a provocative or, if you want, rebellious uh, piece. But yeah, that's just a kind of a side result. That's collateral damage, I would say. <laughs> collateral damage. How do you deal with uh, feedback or even criticism? I mean, as you mentioned before, everybody has an opinion and you like to push the boundary if you get the chance and poke the bear here and there. Why not? Do you uh, pay attention, depend where it's coming from or for you, just background noise? Um, Yeah, like... I, I'm always willing to, to hear critique um, and, and I like to uh, go into a dialogue. Um, but nowadays it's, it's more and more difficult to, to really go into a dialogue because of the, um, the opinions are so um, quickly made and, and uh, not complete, like, like even the factual value of the opinion often isn't right. I think like yeah, I, I, it it doesn't make sense to to um, to react on this, and then it's it's more indeed background noise, and then I kind of leave it. But uh, if people have genuine uh, uh, critique or or a question or something like that, I'm, I try to stand up and and explain my uh, my point of view, and uh, and then you can still disagree or whatsoever. Um, I do. I I do take it seriously. If, if people really are uh, are offended by something or or uh, want to know more about it or don't understand something or so, I'm I'm willing to uh, to uh, to respect that, um, especially if it also comes in a in a respectful way. But if it's just like the the kind of internet um, uh, noise uh, comments and all that, like yeah, then then I. Yeah, then yeah, you can't. That that would be a full time job to respond on all that. So I can't even uh, respond to it. 
Do you have any a good example that you had to have a more meaningful conversation with somebody and explain, uh, you know, the meaning behind your work? And were you? Yeah, able- I must say. Yeah, um, most mostly that that end up in a, in a good conversation. Um, uh, like for instance, with the library project, um, uh, people on beforehand were quite uh, like, "Ooh, what is this going to be?" Because it was already pre-published before it was actually there. And then um, uh, people were when they actually saw it, they they saw also like, "Hey, wait a minute, it, it actually." Makes sense here. It's 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 also in the right proportion. It's it's a good thing, and it and it does a good job for the city. So so there, people also would change their uh, opinion a little bit. Um, the same was well, back in the days when I did the burnt furniture. Like also when people saw the actual presentation in Moss, New York, um, it was it was done respectfully. You know, it was done like uh, we knew what we were doing. So so then it makes sense, and. Yeah, those conversations. Um, yeah, mostly it, it ends up like like um, it, it ends up in a nice way. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, I I have to. I, I'm laughing now because of, I'm thinking of the most recent one that I had, and um, and in the end, uh, some uh, the the end conclusion was like that. The other ones are like, yeah, yeah, may, maybe I was a bit uh, jealous, and and maybe I reacted more out of that energy. <laughs> so okay, I so, like, well, that's very honest at least. Yeah. So uh, because it started very negatively, and I tried to say like, yeah, well, what what's the negativity about? And then let me explain a little bit, and then then the end result was was that comment, um, and uh, yeah, and and. Uh, uh, like with the library, for instance, there are a few, like every part in it, I can explain why I chose for that word. And, and for, uh, for like, for instance, there it says lectori salutum. And that, um, and, and it's in neon lights. Well, people see only the neon lights. But when I explain like lectori salutum, that is what you put in front. I don't know if that's international, but in Holland we do that. Uh, if you don't know to who you are writing, so I can't like dear Yuri, but I I don't know your name, and I, I select yeah. L S Lactori Salutum. Nobody knows that, and that means welcome to the reader. Well, I thought how nice is that to have that by the entrance of your library. Welcome to the reader. So if you explain those kind of things, then people start to kind of uh, get over the first impression and and actually love the the, the piece. So um, so that's that's one example. What's your your creative process? Do you are you someone who needs to draw everything? Uh, you know, like when you have an idea, something you want to you know, pursue it. How do you go about to first step? What is the first thing you do? Um, uh, I think like it, it depends a little bit where where it what the, the 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 step before the first step is either it comes from. 100% from me or it comes from a, a, a briefing, a, like a, 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 an assignment or something like that. Um, if it comes from me, then it just spontaneously comes in me like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if uh, like I see something or or, uh, or I think of something like, hey, I would like to um, uh, make, a, make a work about this subject. And then I think like, yeah, then I've Visualize that in my head how I could communicate that in a in a in yeah in something in in a physical object. Um, if it's more from somebody who gives me uh, like like a commission, mm-hmm. then I think like okay, what is what is the question and and how can I give that a twist in which I feel like I am uh, yeah that becomes my uh, that I feel related to it huh? like also the library or or what I said about G Star like hey they ask me for something which. Uh, like G Star asked me for something that I don't really want to participate in. Like I don't want to be just another face of a greenwashing program. Um, but how can I twist it in such a way that I uh, genuinely like it? Um, well, in G Star, I had it already in the back of my mind. By the library, it was uh, like I looked at that contrast and I thought, like, hey, that that fits. And with the library, it also went hand in hand with my general interest of the last few years about. Um, about the um, the contrast between between um, uh, the the daily amount of things that 
ask your attention, you know, like uh, Instagram or uh, social media in general or, or in the streets, the commercials, all that. And, and how does that relate to your autonomous self? Like how do those two uh, and how do you relate to the rest of the world and how are you inside? So that's something. And um, neon lights uh, are, are kind of a symbol for this, for this attention machine that, that constantly is around you. So, so, it's, so that's something that interests me in general. Um, also this year in, in Milan, like um, with G-Star, I'm not only presenting this airplane, but also some light sculptures, which relate a little bit to the piece that I made for the, li for the library, also with neons. And there, a lot of neons say less, 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 less. So that's a kind of a contrast, you know, like, like uh, you put a lot of things saying less. And another thing um, with with moving letters saying more, 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 more. So that's kind of almost kind of becomes a kind of a creature or a lava stream saying more, more, more. Um, but yeah, it's it, so so somehow in my mind, like I liked that that thing with neons with, with this contrast, and then and then yeah, I try a few things. It's never a linear process. It's not I start here and it ends there. It's it's always like having all your sensors for what like there's a kind of a intuition of a message that you want to bring across or so or, or something that you would like to express and like hey how can i with which tools with which ingredients do i need to kind of bring this to to a concrete work and um yeah and and and, and then you also can see like hey it, it relates to each other um during uh, a certain amount of time like uh like this what i just say like like the things that take uh, the, 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 like neons and, and things that want attention or or that kind of a, a economy of attention as i sometimes call it um um interests me like also three years ago in milan i don't know if you saw that i made a video installation in which a lot of people said i think yeah so you see uh, just, I, I just took a small sentence when, when somebody said, I think, like, uh, I think it's uh, nice weather today or so. Like yeah. if somebody said, I think, and I put that sentence of thousands of people and I put them all after each other. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. And I made a lot of screens saying, I think, I think, I think, I think. Uh, so it was a, a cacophony of, of people who were about to give their opinion. Yeah, it, it also relates a little bit to this economy of of attention you know so so yeah it's it's uh, that's why i say like it's not a linear process it's apparently that's has my interest and, and i put it in different ways in my mind and then i i start making something out of it i look if it works like if, if it actually does what i hoped that it was doing and then i uh, move on well i guess my question would be like do you have anything that makes helps you spark the creativity like do you usually uh, during the, the creative process are you, you listen to music are you go for walks you know is anything specific that you like to do when you're working on those projects um no it also comes in different ways like sometimes um i have immediately an idea and i don't need to walk or or whatsoever and sometimes i need to think more like like okay um that that's especially with uh, with commission so if if the question comes from from an external party and then indeed like sometimes i think yeah i know it, it i know that i can do something with it but it doesn't really feel right yet and and then uh, yeah, indeed sometimes i go for a walk or or whatsoever but mostly it also just works just to start working, you know, like uh, that's also what I often say as a teacher at the design. Uh, I used to be teacher at the design academy. I, I, uh, um, recently, I didn't do it yet, but didn't do it anymore. But but I don't believe that much in in um, a walk in the park or or having another coffee or uh, whatever. Um, often the ideas come also by just doing. Like you mostly have something like a starting point, you know, like. In, like for instance with these neon lights i just thought like let's buy five of those neon lights uh online you know and let's see like okay uh, what what can i do with it and and hey it's also a physical thing so what i can build something with it you know like and then along the way i will find where it will land so i think also yeah well, uh, people sometimes call that thinking hands you know like like just start somewhere and and, and start making it because of your mind goes uh, goes 
along with, with, with what you're doing. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the teaching aspect because you had the opportunity to, you know, to really teach classes and everything. Now, historically, our industry is being, you know, dominated culturally and in economic, for a very specific economic group, right? There's, but do you feel like there's more diversity these days? Do you see more representation in our community? Do you feel like we're doing a good job on that or there's a lot of room to improve? Oh, I was going to say, so the question is like, because uh, if we look at the design world in general, has historically been dominated by a certain cultural and, and social group, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But because you are in school and teaching the young generation, I'm wondering if you see more of uh, diversity and, and more inclusion comes to the school and, and, and the future of upcoming designers, you see more of equality and more diversity. Yeah. Let me reframe that because I'm repeating myself over and over again. Sorry. All right. So the design world historically has been dominated by a certain cultural and economic group. So what I'm curious to, to hear your point of view is if you see how the industry is changing in terms of representation, equality, and even inclusion. Yeah, I think um, I think it's an important uh, topic um, to to have. The, yeah, more diversity if you want. And um, um, if I make my work, I try to to make it understandable at least for for a wide range of uh, of people. I I really like it if children like my work, for instance, because if I think like uh, if children like it, then then I I guess that the children from every culture would like it, you know. So um, and and also children are are the most diverse group. By definition, because of uh, like every, uh, it, it, yeah, there there is no thing as a, as a, um, uh, like like they don't look at at um, race or or um, or sexual orientation or that kind of uh, things like like so so it, it, it's an open it's an open source so to say, and um, so then I think like okay, well if if they uh, like my work then then that's an important uh, tool um and and it's a it's also a difficult debate i think like the, um how to bring in the uh the more diversity in um in the art world and in the design world because of um uh there are so many uh that there is a kind of a certain standard and and how to break through the standard without being forced you know like uh like if if it's if a world is dominated by white male heterosexual man like me then yeah i think it's it's also fine to kind of uh step aside and uh, and and make more space for uh, for others on the other hand like yeah everybody also wants to have a chance including the white male uh, man so it's it's a um it's a dilemma and uh what i try to do is like um uh in, involve other artists uh, in it in which i try to uh to kind of pick a, a diverse group of people like um for instance i did just uh, interior design for uh for the groninger museum restaurant the groninger museum is this memphis kind of museum in the north of the netherlands a very nice museum and they have this restaurant in which i also put a lot of different artists there you know like uh some some more established artists from the museum collection and some young artists and uh, artists from different uh, uh countries different cultures uh different backgrounds um, um and not necessarily established uh, artists also just graduated uh, artists and everything so so like just my personal choice um uh, of 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 a as diverse possible group so then i try to kind of um break through the rhythm in uh, in a natural way because if i st still think like yeah this is really a space which i'm which i really like um and at the same time i'm also uh promoting um other uh artists um who yeah who, who probably also have a chance here so that's that's a way but it's a, it's a difficult uh, debate because of uh yeah i think yeah there there's the, there are so many groups and subgroups and um yeah you never it, there's always something to be that in which you are not complete enough yet 
So, uh, but yeah, we're making small steps, I think. There's always work to be done. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how important it is uh, fairs and organizations such as Milan and Art Basel to be involved in those conversations and really open up doors for more representation? Do you feel perhaps those institutions, including museums and some big name galleries, are the ones that perhaps should be leading the way and exposing and, and, and introducing, you know, that level of, of diversity in, in artists? Or, you know, at the end of the day, we, the art in the design, it's a business. It's very much what's performing well, what's capturing people's interest in conversation. Uh, and just let it be, put it out there and see how the world responds. Yeah, but if, if, you, if you only let it uh, depend on the market, then the people who are strongest at this very moment will uh, evolve their strength um so so somehow you should kind of uh break that through um uh, and and that's why i think i it's good that it has a certain attention and sometimes i think like it goes too extreme that i think like yeah you can't ignore the fact that uh um yeah whether or not you like it like there has been a big uh a, a great amount of time in which there were um white male men dominant in the in the art world um uh, and yeah that's the nowadays we have another opinion about it and we would do it differently and we should do it differently but uh, i sometimes have difficulties if if that history is also being ignored or something like that and i think like yeah come on like it is it is the history which which we are facing and uh, and we should learn from that and we should maybe have a different point of view about it but uh, but by not showing what has been in the history or by by giving it um a twisted uh a twisted reality like uh, then i think we uh yeah it's also not a fair representation of where we come from no i agree with you and i think it's a subject that these days everybody's so uh, careful to discuss because they don't really want to upset anybody you know they're really much kind of walking in eggs but we need to talk about it and have those dialogues and conversation explore ideas, possibilities, you know, say something wrong and be corrected. You know, that's okay to make yeah. mistakes. We all, you know, do that all the time. And I think it's part of the process. But um, I want to go back to a quick topic that we talked a little bit earlier about uh, the source and creativity. And you were talking about you were teaching it before in schools and you had opportunity to teach a lot of, you know, young upcoming designers. Uh, and, but for you, it's very much about doing the work, right? The process is really getting it in there, doing it every day, and then the ideas will come with it. Do you see creativity as a gift, like something perhaps you were born with and there's a couple, or it's more like an exercise? I mean, you can become better at it by, you know, putting the work. Yeah, Um I think a little bit of it is a is, is a talent, a, a gift, um, or, or an interest. But I think um, also a lot of it is uh, is purely making it. I think, uh, yeah, and and also other skills like um, there are, there's a lot of pragmatism in in making things. You know, like it's just. Uh, it's the balance between the financial part, the the, uh, the the physical part. Like, what can you what can you actually physically make in a certain material? Um, like um, uh, like a certain quality of of communication and like all those elements. Like that's ninety percent of the job, and um, uh, and and then there's also an element of of. A, a kind of a talent, like a sixth sense of uh, for doing things, which can make the difference, maybe. But uh, uh, in, in fact, I think everybody could, uh, uh, yeah. Like, like there is this this um, you're saying, you know, like uh, everybody is an artist, like like uh, and everybody, like uh, in in fact, everybody uh, has the skills to to make something and and to make something good. Um, uh, but it's uh, uh, and 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 uh, yeah, there are other artists of which I think like wow, he or she has a has a, a quality which I really 
I, I don't have that, you know, like the, the, I think like, yeah, I would never be as good. So there's always a difference between, between one maybe has a certain talent, which is, which stands out from others, but, but the, the bulk of it really, that's just work. That's just physical doing it. And I'm, I'm sure that everybody could, uh, everybody has enough skills to graduate from an art school. Like that's, that's a kind of a level that, that you don't need to have the talent for for that so uh yeah that's just hard work <laughs> everything's a little bit of a hard work right inspiration yeah. determination hard work uh i wanna indulge me with something quickly here let's hypothetic speaking will you manage to get a time machine and go back in time where would you go um I would like to go to uh, uh, prehistorical times or so, really, when when there's no even when there's no language and and when there's no like when really everything still needs to be invented and uh, like when there are no references yet, you know, like really uh, a blank canvas from where where history starts. Like I would really like to know how that is. Like if you. If you don't have any reference, not like, and nobody taught you anything yet, and you have to kind of start really from scratch, um, yeah, like uh, kind of delete, uh, uh, like it's a deleting the the know how that you got from your culture and from your parent and from from whatever, um, and from centuries of development, um, yeah, that that will be very interesting, I think. Now let's let's pretend you went back in time, but now you go back and you meet yourself as a 15 year old. What would you tell your 15 year old? And, and if you tell your 15 year old self, your life and everything you've done so far, what would that 15 year old think about it? Um, I think my 15 years old version, uh, would be quite satisfied with, uh, with how I did things in the end. Like, um, I always try to also go back to, um, uh, to what I would do or what, uh, what, um, I, I don't want to miss the, the qualities that I had as a 15 years old or even younger, you know, like much of my work is also has that topic even, you know, like, like clay furniture, making it in a childish way. I always try to kind of, I actually, my job is a, a certain time traveling. I always try to go find the balance between my mature self and, and my inner child, if you want to say it like that. So, um, and I try to always have the, still have the guts to do things which I normally would not do because of it's unpractical or because of it's too expensive or because of it, uh, it would be offensive uh, to uh, something or, or I would ruin my, my career. I always think like, no, I want to kind of be able to ruin my career at any moment and, and make a bold enough step to kind of see what happens then. Um, uh, and that is what I learned from my inner 15 years old. So in that sense, I think uh, he should be uh, satisfied. Um, and what I would tell him is is really like, like yeah, in the end, everybody is kind of, nobody really knows what he's talking about, right? Like, like, <laughs> uh, uh, like the, uh, when you're 15 years old, you look up to people who are older, even to an 18 years old. Like when I was 15 and looking at somebody who was 18, I thought like uh, he or she knows knows what's live about, you know, and now, yeah, you think like yeah, an 18 years old doesn't know anything about it and a 45 years old, neither. And, and, a 86 one, like the, the only conclusion the 86 one, uh, could have is like, okay, well, it, nobody really knows so <laughs> why I care. So, so that's the only difference. Like, uh, either you're aware that you don't know anything or you still think that there is uh, something uh, that you can, uh, discover or something like that. Um, so just, yeah, nobody knows what, what is, what is it about what we're doing? Um, nobody has the, the, the secret key of how to live a life and, uh, you just have to move on and, and make the best out of it. And, um, and, and yeah, well, when you're, when you're 15 years old and you think like, Ooh, maybe I should not do this, or maybe I should reconsider this because of what is as if there is something supposed to be done. 
but there is nothing supposed to be done. Just yeah. do what you feel like you should be doing and do it all the way. Then, uh, then it will, uh, that, that's actually the whole purpose. I think. Who were your role models then your heroes? Um, uh, well, let's start with my parents. Um, and I think I kind of cherry picked a little bit from, from both of my parents. My, um, my father was a kind of a troublemaker. Um, uh, and he, uh, uh, but a very autonomous, uh, mind, like, like, like a very, uh, like he had his own opinion and he wouldn't care about whatever, uh, whatever others would think of it. And if even also, if he would come in trouble by that. My mom, my mom was and is still because she, she's still alive. Um, very much a connector, you know, like like uh, not not confronting uh, people with each other or uh, trying to keep the peace and everything. And I try to kind of um, poke uh, without uh, without making uh, too many uh, enemies, you know. So I, I try to kind of. <laughs> so sometimes I feel like a little bit like a Trojan horse, like. Um, especially with the commissioner, like, like they, they ask me for a job and I do something which they didn't really want to do, like G-Star, like, uh, we don't really want to make a private jet out of, like, we don't want to bring that message across, you know? So, so with the skills of my mom, I, I, uh, get into the, the job and with the skills of my father, I kind of, uh, shake the tree a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, probably they were my uh, role models. All right. So before we wrap it up, I want to ask the three questions I ask every single time we have somebody here with us. And number one is a book that you recommend for us, uh, a movie, a show, even um, like an album, something to listen to. And uh, I guess who should we have here next in the podcast? Okay. Well, the book is a difficult one because of um, the most recent books I read were Dutch, or mostly I listened to books, by the way. Um, so it's a, it's an audio book. Um, but if I go international, then it's a book that many people are already reading. It's a really bestseller. But uh, this biography by Matthew Perry, like that's that's a quite a tough story and uh, and also a beautiful story, like how he went in his role uh, how we went into acting and mm. uh, but also into a lot of troubles yeah um it's very interesting and um um a film like recently i watched uh, uh, i i'm just uh, i'm just i don't have an all-time classic or so um but i would say um recently i watched bullet train which i really liked with uh, brad pitt i really like the, the whole style of it and uh like it's it's a, it's a different it's, it's a really contemporary film. I, I really uh, enjoyed it. Yeah, it's David uh, Finch. I think David Finch directed. It's a great movie. Yeah. There's a lot of the neons and other Japanese culture going on as well. So I can see how, yeah, you know, how it relates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and the kind of the absurdism of it, and uh, yeah, I, I like, I like these kind of things in which you feel like, okay, they they grab the medium and they twisted things. And it brings you into a place where you haven't been. And uh, like whatever the story of the film is like that, that is what art should do. No, like, yeah. like it, it, it takes something that you, that you know, but it twists it in such a way that your, that your body goes into second gear. Oh, that's a, that's a friend's quote. Do you hear that? That's a <laughs> <laughs> We're making connections now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, uh, the third question was like, who to ask, huh? Yeah. I would go for um, Walter von Beirendonk, um, the fashion designer from uh, from Antwerp. Uh, I, I did a few projects with him, and um, and I think he's a very interesting uh, personality and with very interesting work. Martin, thanks for joining us. I'm so excited to have the chance to to, to catch up and talk. We've been following the work for for many years now, in, and uh, have the chance to get to know you a little bit more, you know, on the personal level and a little bit of a story. It just adds so much to to who you are and to your work. It makes us appreciate even more. So thanks again for joining us today, for sure. Okay, thank you.